good evening everyone welcome to 102nd edition of fireport 80 so fireport 80 is a monthly technology session hosted by fire corporation in association with nascom the session aims to provide a platform for tech enthusiasts to come together to discuss and analyze the emerging trends in technology in the it industry the objective of this endeavor is to create tech communities which will enable peer group learning but before the session let's start with, the, with a few of the latest updates from the tech world i welcome ajoy for the tech bytes session good evening everyone Let's get started right with the latest updates in the tech world in the last month. First up, first up we have the new release of uh, GPT-4, the latest model of uh, the AI tool that powers ChatGPT. The latest model was released on March 14th and it has eight times the text processing capacity compared to its previous model and has also advanced problem solving capabilities. While there are big moves on the field of AI, Google has decided not to sit back and watch. It has finally released its latest AI model BARD for public. Although the access is currently limited to a few countries and a few uh, and only to people who are, who are in the waiting list. The last two updates has been about chatbots, but don't think that the only field that has been in making an impact is with chatbots. Meta has made a chat GPT like moment on computer vision with its new model uh, segment anything model or SAM. The model can help you. Uh, th this model can help you find any image from uh, find any segment from an image and is supposed to be a new chat GPT like innovation in provision. And here is Sam in action. Another innovation that AI has been making is in the field of cybersecurity. With Microsoft new cybersecurity AI assistant security copilot. This technology is powered by OpenAI's ChatGPT and Microsoft's own model for security updates. Uh, it can help security professionals with event logs, uh, creating the event logs reports and performing analysis. The thing is that it can ac accept natural language and pr process it. Yeah, up next we have an update from the world of robotics. Scientists from Israel have developed a micro robot on the size of a single biological cell. It can help with drug tests, um, genetic editing, and other advanced fields. And finally, an update from the world of UX. Instagram has launched a new feature called as collective, uh, called collaborative collections. It is similar to a YouTube shared playlist where you can multiple people can add posters or reels uh, to their collection. Currently, it is limited to 250 people and has been released to, to the public, so you can test it out. Thank you. Thank you, Ajay, for the updates. Uh, Let's uh, get into the main session. 
Our speaker for today is coming on behalf of EOX Shorts, a knowledge sharing community. So I welcome Malu from Cubus. We'll now introduce you to EOX Shorts. It's not Malu, it's Malu. Okay, very important. Okay, so uh, I'm here to introduce UX Shorts and also the speaker um, today. So UX Shorts is a community for people who are UX enthusiasts, like someone who likes to do UX design, someone who is into UX design, someone who likes to learn UX design. So we are a bunch of UX enthusiasts who is trying to spread awareness about user experience design. And uh, I actually expected a little more crowding here without empty chairs depot, but I still want to know how many are UX people here into UX design? who call themselves UX designers, UI designers, visual designers. <laughs> Definitely like issue. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so it's again UX shots and a bunch of people. And so I think uh, this session will help you to understand the basics of what we are trying to cover. But uh, I just want to give this uh, message from all of us from UX shots that user experience is a way of life. Okay, it is how you see things, everything like in this room to this, uh, you know, we don't see this, we have a light problem here and the contrast is not reaching us, again an experience problem, so everything is user experience to us and speaker for today is Ashish Abraham, he is an active member of UX Shorts, he is with UX Shorts since uh, 2020 and we took a gap in giving sessions like after COVID and this is our first session after that. So thanks to Deepu for this opportunity and we plan to be active again in the UX community. So we would like to connect and network with each of you here. Okay, over to Ashish. Okay, uh, thank you all. Uh, thank you, Manu. So good evening folks. I am really glad that you all guys made here despite your tight day schedule. Uh, I really appreciate it. Thank you. So I would like to begin this way. Right? So we are all in this pursuit of trying to master our craft and design, probably development, all those things. And that's what we do only. Fair play to that. But for the most part, what we're trying to do is design static screens, mainly the designers. There's nothing wrong with that, okay? But there might be a time or oh, there will be a time you might feel like your what do you say, skill set is getting stagnant or probably you're going to enter that mundane job category. So what do you actually do then? So what happens is, you know, you have to basically think outside the box. I mean, it's quite generic when you say this, but uh, we have been hearing that think outside the box, do something outside the box. Uh, yeah, so do something outside the box. From that point, what we try to do is like try to learn more dimensions about what the design world is. How many dimensions are there? What shapes of the uh, what shapes of the design world? What shapes of the design world? Yeah, yeah. So and what shapes of the design world? All right. So today we are going to take that opportunity to touch or scratch the surface of one such dimension called motion design. I would like to put an analogy this way, all right? Uh, think of a room, okay? Think of a room that probably is your favorite room and you will be doing all those things in your power to make it the best room possible because you enjoy the most, the best experience there. Add new things to it, update things in it so that it stays, it stays at the top level. So this story actually holds true with your skill set as well, right? So I believe that to enjoy design to its fullest, to its fullest, we need to understand how motion works in user interface design. And with that segueing, I believe I have your attention now. So attention is a very key element for all designers because it helps us capture our users, okay? So to explain further, I'll just show you an example. There's a very uninteresting and bland circle on the screen. Nothing much to say about that. Say I add a bit of motion to that. The circle starts moving from left to right. Your eyes start moving from left to right. So there's something interesting going on. The circle remains uninteresting as well. Now I'll show you another example. 
now the circle has turned to an array of circles and the screen is full of circles. So all these circles are trying to fight for your attention. So, you know, where to look is the first question and where to follow all these circles. So what happens is, think of this way, I try to add one motion to one particular circle here, a small bouncing action over there, and your attention starts spanning towards that small circle in that large number of circles. Another example. Pixar. So quite familiar with this design studio, right? So this is their logo on every product that they sell, and that's pretty evident. But do you know how they show this logo when it comes on a movie TV, movie or TV? Anyone? Yeah, the lamb comes in. The what do you say? The logo as is presented on screen on every theater. It says a huge story. It's a motion design indulgence. It is open to interpretation. There's a lot of story behind it, and there is a brand identity towards that. And also, fun fact is that the pixie lamp is available for sale. So there's also a product in that. So it brings me back to the first topic, attention. At this point in time, uh, we are at an all-time low when it comes to getting attention because we are bombarded by comments from all the realms. YouTube Shorts, Instagram Reels, TikTok, banned in India, but still a quiet player. And all these things try to grab your attention, and where you give your attention is important. And my topic today is actually covering how do you bring back that attention from the user with the power of motion design. All right, so before, we actually get in the intricate details of what motion design is, how it, how do you do it, all those things. Let's take a small sneak peek on how it came to be in its form. So I'll be going into the timeline of how motion design came into its being. 2023 now, rewinding all the way to 1940s. So in the 1940s, this came up. So this is the opening movie uh, title for the movie The Man with a Golden Arm. So this was designed by the great American graphic designer Saul Bass. So his intention while he came up with this title was that the people who are going to watch the movie needs to indulge in what's going to happen. So give them an indulgence before the movie starts. Cool. Then say I forward a bit of time to 1950s there's another movie called Vertigo by Alfred Hitchcock. So here, computers started kicking in. More visual fidelity started kicking in. More uh, technological advances started coming into the field. So what do you say? You leveraged a lot of technology to make things look much better with motion design. Then 1960s, 70s, 80s, then was advent of uh, Disney Animation Studio, Pixar Animation Studio, animation started coming in. And now as we fast forward all the way to 2023, we have motion design across a lot of verticals. News broadcast, social media, sports broadcast, marketing, education, video games, advert, advertising, branding, websites, self-service systems, UI, UX, and cinematography. So I'll take a couple of examples. News broadcast. Wow filled with motion design from top to bottom and this is quite flashy I understand it's all over the place but it was intended to be like that because you're going to be, you're going to actually be glued to the screen for a long time so you'll take your time to go from left to right top to bottom and right to left everything is there a lot of motion is going on there but yeah we'll actually go through it but when it comes to sports broadcast the motion design actually became a little more subtler. That is because the event behind the motion design is designed to be the center of attraction. So all you need to do here is have very subtle motion design. So how do you capture the motion? I mean, how do you uh, capture the user's attention while something important such as a World Cup or the football or basketball is going on? Goal scored or probably a foul. 
hit a six, hit a four, all those things, subtle cues using motion design. And next example is education. Just realize that there are a lot of visual learners. I'm pretty sure most of you are visual learners as well. So the people in that category actually need something in front of them in picture to understand what's going on. So all the eight standard, nine standard classes that we had, we never had the privilege to go through all this. So electrons came, electrons went. So I don't know what happened. So this, I think, so was pioneered by Baijus. Then there's Khan Academy. There are a lot of players in the field now that actually, what do you say, delivers education with motion design. So it makes pretty clear what's going on. Okay, coming to the main player here, user interface design. So how user interface design has used motion design in its term here. So in user interface design, you know, it has evolved to a point where focus of attention, excuse me, focus of attention became just one pillar of what is trying to aid. So motion design not only helps with focus of attention, but something more. And that actually happened with as the time evolved to be to this stage. So in UI UX, these are the things that actually help it enhance. So there's visual feedback, there's exhibiting of orientation, there's focus attention that we already said, there's cause and effect, there's expressing of brand personality. Can anyone say what visual feedback is? Anyone? You don't want to give it a try? Visual feedback. No one? Want to give it a try? No one? Interactive all day. So, visual feedback. This is an example of visual feedback. So, where's an iPhone here? iPhone? Ah, iPhone L? Okay, cool. So, in iPhone, you, those who have an iPhone, I'm sorry, all the Android people, there's nothing wrong with owning an Android phone. Everyone will have, you know, their own priorities. There's nothing. So, this is just an example I took from iPhone. Probably there's much better ways in Android to do it. So, what happens here is, you, there's a button over there. So what it actually does is show an interaction there, double clicking the button actually allows you to authenticate a payment. So this is what visual feedback is about. Yes, I have Android. Exhibiting orientation. So all, you've, all of you know that swiping up was one of the major actions of how Android used to unlock your devices, I mean, how you used to unlock your Android devices. So as smartphones came into its being, a lot of motions were included in it knowingly or unknowingly, say there's landscape to portrait, portrait to landscape, a lot of accelerometers were used, accelerometers were used. So how do you communicate motion in which direction? So motion designs are being used to exhibit orientation. Then there's focus attention. So the other examples aside, this is yet another example of how motion design is used to focus your attention on something on the screen. So maps, as you click self-locate, it zooms all the way into showing the attention where you actually are. Then there is cause and effect. Every action has a reaction. So what happens is you try to buy something, you try to click something, you actually expect the system to give you a feedback. So react in some way so that you know the system is working. So clicking that succulent plants, I bought something, it goes all the way to the cart. Click the cart is the next part of your journey. So this is cause and effect. Next is pretty cool, express brand personality. And almost every company in the Silicon Valley has their own brand identity that involves motion design. So this is Google's uh, self-identified you know, brand of what you say, Google, Google Assistant. And this is how motion design actually helps Google promote their brands. So you remember how Google, what do you say, Google Assistant works, you know, the three dots pop up and three dots bounce all this together. So there's Siri and all those things. Every product has an identity by using brand, by using motion design. So the question is, 
how do you do it how do you do it where do you start and probably this is the main questions that we you know take in and uh, what are the examples we need to do so all the good fun world was shown in the first part so how do you start so to start with we took three key things as topic today so there's 12 principles of motion design a couple of tools probably you know probably we need that to apply all these things then we need to follow some guidelines and here to say some no nos so the 12 principles of motion design was actually inspired by the 12 principles of animation that was created by Walt Disney it has gone through its test of time and is pretty awesome so jumping into this 12 principles of motion design you want to throw it all on the face of the screen there is easing offset and delay parenting transformation value change masking overlay cloning obscuration parallax dimensionality dolly and zoom <laughs> so these are the 12 principles i know it's a mouthful we'll go through that one by one the first one is easing so anyone want to give it a try again what is easing yeah sure ease and ease out there's an example here so could you elaborate on what that thing is any simple word will do control of the timing absolutely right so that's what it is easing is basically so time speed those things are related in the world of motion design so controlling the timing is actually means how fast you go or how slow you go so easing is the principle of accelerating and decelerating or vice versa of an object on the screen cool so what we actually do is this this is how it is so we try to move this is actually a principle that you just said there's an example that's ease in ease out first of all what is ease in can you try again like getting into a frame and get, uh, getting out of here close but ease in actually means start slow yeah okay start slow so ease out is end slow okay and what will be ease in ease out actually is to make a statement and exit the screen and then there is ease in and out probably you can use it when it is there on the screen and moves from a to b in the screen then there is one more fancy animation that i missed in this easing which is spring so spring animation can you recall anyone where have you seen it yeah uh, where have you seen it pull to refresh pull to refresh so there is twitter there is instagram all these things have this in animation that they use called pull to refresh so spring action is quite fancy and steep jobs was a great fan of bouncy and spring animation that's the reason why most of the things in their interface has this prime prime bouncy animations so uh, coming back to it why instagram and twitter all use the spring animations because there's a static change on the screen something is not happening you try to pull it and you try to throw it and bring the new one in so that's kind of the back story of how spring works moving on to the next principle we have a james bond here all right so there's three circles moving one after the other so can anyone say what is going on here anyone can give an answer there's you don't have to judge yourself i don't want to give it right no ha huh? loading action loading motion loading yeah loading motion that's what you can do one and there's a second intended purpose of offset and delay which is actually to show things in priority to create a hierarchy between objects on the screen say you want to load a then b then c so that people understand which should come first which could come last and you actually aiding them go through the journey so yeah this is also a famous loading animation so what happens is basically say load 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 anyway so the best example for offset and delay could be probably when you open a screen for the first time say open your favorite app you can see profile loads then the content loads then probably a button load so basically the focus actually goes from a to b which is a button probably so when you direct it that way so click the button is where you need to hit so that you go to the next screen so that is an example of how offset and delay works then there is this concept called parenting 
a circle moves, something moves along with it. So what happens is there's a parent and there's a child. So say a parent moves along, the child follows. So how this is done is that, anyone can think of any example? The funny part is we have gone through all these principles in our life, just that we don't know the name. It's not mandatory that you need to know the name, but probably, yeah, you can just know it anyway. Anyone, going to try, anyone want to give it a try again? What is parenting? Slide up, beautiful. So the best example for that is a carousel or a slider. So you move those things, the thing below moves. So it can be a slider where you try to adjust something and the prices change. It can be a review system where you try to move from zero to 10 and probably a smiley face moves from sad to happy. So that is what parenting is, wonderful. Then there's transformation. One of the fundamental principles of motion design, as it says in this animation, circles turns to square, square turns to circle. But in the real world, what we do, this is probably transforming buttons. Say you hit a button called submit, it says submit, submitted. Or probably load the button to the full page saying that payment has been done. So this is what transformation is all about. Try to change one element to the other. Next, value change. Who all has fitness watches here? Fitness watches, any watch. Yeah, she has a fitness watch, okay. So, uh, fitness watches uses animation a lot. Try to close your rings or use fitness rings to say that how quickly you walked, how slowly you walked, all those things. And what basically happens is show value change. So this is one of the animation that exists here. Another example can be a loading. Say you load something, you wait for the loader to finish loading. Or probably uh, when you try to copy something, A to B, it shows something is happening. So there's a very fundamental, uh, yet another fundamental motion design that helps you give a feedback to say that the system has registered what you try to do, it's working behind. So that's what value changes. Masking. So this is what masking is about, but is it clear what masking is trying to do here? Anyone? We have reached half state of 12, so it's six principles now. Masking, anything? Anything funny, fancy that you see with this animation? Something that is happening? No? Come on, guys. Cool. Yeah, they never All right. Anyway, so what happens here is there is a square, but as a square opens, you reveal to see more squares. Masking, the concept of masking is try to hide or reveal something behind a particular object on the screen. So if you want examples for masking, that would be probably your media player that has a small mini bar below. So when you click the mini bar, it opens to show the all, what do you say, the entire album art, the, uh, the controls of the music player. Or probably you have seen a card that just shows a map. When you say click view more, it opens up to the entire big mask, I mean big, big map. So these all are examples of how masking is trying to be done, done in UI. Overlay. So it would be good. It would be good. Actually, it would be actually good if someone tried to say what is this as well. Anything will do. Anything will do. I don't want to judge you. So nothing will be judged here. So anything will do here. Anyone want to give a try? What overlay is? What is happening? So that's what we just need to know. You, Sachin. Some elements are being hidden by an overlaying element. Yeah. So with overlay, what you try to do is add a spatial depth to the screen. Something is hiding something and it's something, I mean, it shows or reveals itself when you try to pull it. You want to know the best example? You have all been doing it. Swipe left or right on your messages. Swipe left or right on your mail. Swipe left or right on WhatsApp if it's there to show delete or more options. So this is what overlay is all about. Try to reveal something under the layer. So what it creates is a spatial hierarchy of UI. 
Next, super fancy and super understandable example, I believe, cloning. I don't have to say it's a biological term. Cloning basically means to create more elements from a single element. And the best example, probably, I don't need to explain. This is a floating action button. Almost all of you here have probably used it. You click it, more actions come from that plus. Then there's this principle called obscuration. So, obscuration, what it does is, can you see it? So, there's something going on there, right? So, with the principle of obscuration, what you try to do is that you try to hide something partially so that you get attention to something else, right? So, you try to hide the screen behind partially by probably reducing the opacity or blurring it so that something on top of it gets more attention. So I'll show you an example here. Obscuration. So opening a folder, it blurs the behind, blurs the background and shows the folder. So if it was computers, what do you do? You basically have these confirmation dialogues. Do you want to delete yes or no? So the screen goes all back. This thing in the front takes your attention, right? So you click delete. So the more attention is to that particular piece on the screen, delete or cancel. Then there's parallax. Want to try to identify what parallax is? Okay, I'm not going to. Anyway, so parallax basically means to adjust the speed of objects on the screen, various speeds for various objects, okay? So there's a background that moves kind of slow, then there's a foreground thing on top of it that goes, tries to move faster. So the perception behind this is that when something behind moves slower and when something, some, when you try to move something, something that, uh, when something in front of you tries, tries to move faster, your eyes get used to that particular thing in the real estate, say it moves faster. You try to give, I mean, you try to give your attention towards that, and the thing that is behind and farther away takes less attention. So, uh, people who have visited Apple screens, Apple websites, so Apple is notoriously famous for using parallax animations. Say the, what do you say? The, they don't want you to read anything. So you know, or probably what they try to give you is just probably super fast MacBooks or whatever it is. So they just try to load the back of the screen slow, but the thing in the front. Their products explode, show all the things inside, try to create a beautiful image. So this is what parallax animation is. Dimensionality. Uh, yet another principle that tries to show you a hierarchy between the objects on the screen, just like overlay, just to show you that something else beneath it, above it, below it or side of it, whatever it is, is possible as an action to that object. So here, as you can see, something's opening up to show that there's something inside. So probably what happens here is all kind of animations like drag, dragging something, probably clicking and flipping something, all those things belong to the principle of dimensionality. So what really happens here is create a hierarchy, again, just like overlay, to show that multiple actions are possible from the same place. An example of that would be this cover flow. So your iPods, if you had one or you have seen it, you used to have cover flow. So when you try to click one album cover, it flips to show the songs in that album. And it doesn't restrict to that. There are many examples. So there are probably places, uh, cards. The best example, probably click and flip. So that's the best example used with dimensionality. Dolly and zoom. Two things, but one. So Dolly is this concept that was uh, that is very much, what do you say, prevalent in the cinematography world. Dolly actually means to move the camera to the front or back so that you get a wider or a tighter shot of a thing in the front. So move it back or move it front. Zoom, as you all know, is what? The Zoom, zooming. So what zooming actually does is try to enhance an image to be a bigger one artificially, so bigger one. So dolly and zoom as a combination when you use, what happens is when you try to zoom in, 
you want is the effect of something coming onto your face. So uh, what here happens is that you know anything that stays in a place tries to come towards you, like this. So zoom, basically zoom means what? Try to zoom in or out. It stays there. So when you try to have a dolly and zoom effect, what happens is it comes kind of like this. So it's kind of like coming to your face. So I think the so Instagram probably when you try to click an image, tries to pop it up onto your face, it zooms at the right time. Then there is this gallery images in your phone probably when you try to click, it comes onto your face, but it also zooms. So this principle is what happening behind. Again, I'm sorry, iPhone users uh, who swipes up again on top, there's a zoom in effect of how all the icons going back into place. Why I said so is because probably next time when you open your phone, swipe up or swipe left or go through each of these apps, okay, you have this curiosity, okay, this is what happens in the background. So you don't need to gospelize these things or by heart this, but probably now you know what these things are. And these are never kind of like what do you say, uh, stringent principles. You can probably, there's always what do you say, the a combination of a principle one and principle two to create something else. And all these things mix and match so that it, it actually be presented beautifully. And with that, I have covered the principles of motion design. And for that, to do all these things, we need some tools. So there are a couple of tools that I thought I would recommend, so probably you can give it a go. Who has used Figma here? Figma? Can you the bridge? Figma? Framer? No. Framer. Cool. Origami? Origami Studio? Nice. There's an OG in the background. Webflow? Again. Nice. And there's this is a real OG with After Effects. After Effects. Wonderful. So, going from, yes, I know. So, going from left to right, we could say that the how complex the system gets also increases. So, how hard it could get to learn, but never impossible. So, and also the complexity of how things can be handled. Figma, Framer, Origami, Webflow, and A. To begin with, Figma, simple, ana, powerful, ana. if you know, you know. So this is one of the most advocated tools, uh, I would say, and I would evangelize that because it's very easy to start with because it does a huge lot of heavy work for you, heavy lifting for you. And in fact, this entire presentation was done in Figma. So Figma gives you that you know, leverage to actually enter this world, you know, give it a try. So that's what actually Figma did because early in the days, there was After Effects and everyone used to jump into After Effects and to go through all the process of learning it and going through then there there was a time in era where Figma made its advent and that's when people started using motion design more. Yes, you need to know what motion design is in its intricate rabbit hole levels, but yeah, you could actually start, give it a go. So that's what actually Figma did. Framer is a tool that used to exist, but is actually getting into a huge level now because of the potential it has. So in Framer, so Framer is kind of a website building tool. So if you have the knowledge of how Figma works, it's easy for you to transition to Framer. And it has multiple poten poten potential of how uh, motion design works when compared to Figma. It's just a huge lot more. And what Framer does is try to design a canvas, do it, hit publish button, and the website is up. It's as simple as that. So that's what Framer does. Then jumping up one, Tire up, that would be Origami. This is by Facebook, Airbnb, Instagram. Two products that is completely built and prototyped in the design phase using this. Was was used, I mean, this was what was used. So, how Origami works is again a bit complex. Probably you have nodes and all those things. Nodes is basically what? It has a lot of logical cases. Say, node is something like a block. You give your ideations like, you know, if A is B then B is equal to C, all those things, and you try to wire it to something else. So how that's how block, what, node designing works. And it's a bit more complicated, but it is a huge, hugely versatile tool. Then there's Webflow. Yet another website building tool with a huge potential just like Framer. But the prologue or the prerequisite that you need 
before you start with Webflow is that you need to be aware of HTML CSS because that entire software, though it is simple as drag and drop, you know, drop a div, drop a span, so all those terminologies are very much in line with HTML and CSS, so you need to know what is what, padding, margin, all those things, but it is yet another sophisticated tool, you can probably create you know, the most fancy websites here that exist now using Webflow. Then there is the king, After Effects. So fair play, all who knows After Effects uh, has a huge potential of doing a lot of things because there's a lot of plugins that directly help you, you know, create, uh, help you actually imp export your work from just from uh, AE to the web. So the only problem, no, I wouldn't say problem, the only downside of After Effects is that it's a very complex software but it's because it is hugely complex, I mean it's hugely manipulatable, each and every component or object on the screen can be manipulated and it is hugely versatile. It is not impossible, again I say, but it is a beautiful tool. So that was a couple of tools I want to show you. Next, we learn something, we know the tools that we need to use and probably we need to know some things that we shouldn't do. So that's what this topic is, idea to say some no-nos. The first one is avoid being flashy. That news broadcast I showed you earlier. So that you throw a lot of things on the screen with a lot of motions. If you want to stay there for a long time, fair play. But if something in this world that you know moves every 30 seconds, something else, trying to be flashy can be dangerous. The next one, don't let it lag. So I know this entire screen is being live streamed. I hope the animations didn't lag there. So what happens is, when you try to lag something, they might feel their system as an issue, our system as an issue, and the entire experience breaks. So this is what don't let it lag means. It's as simple as that. Don't forget the intention and reasoning. So before you jump into motion design as such, uh, what we need to know is that you know, motion design is actually created as a complement to the screen that you create. So say there was a screen, uh, motion design just enhances that tenfold. Say there's something, a button, if the button bounces or you click, some kind of interaction happens, you know, it is enhancement. And while you do these enhancements, there's always a purpose and reasoning behind it. Say you wanted to grab the attention faster, you wanted to show that you don't need another page to show feedback. Probably the button itself could show the feedback. So those intricate details on a why, how, should you need to know that first before jumping into it. Don't make it complicated. So you won't make it complicated if you know your intention and the reasoning. So when you try to complicate, what happens is this. By making it complicated means, you know, once you get to the level where you start exploring motion design, you know, all the things that you were doing first in the static designs start coming into motion design as well. Say you want to add a ease, then a flip, then a drag, all these things means complicating the design. It also means increasing the development efforts. Also it might not be practical. So this is what don't make it complicated means. And you won't actually do it if you do the last step. So these are the no-nos. Now, what I have here is a small design drill, all right? So, what happens here is, I'm gonna show you two screens, okay? So the one, the first one has no problem, it is a good UI, it expresses its feelings, it shows all the things. And the second one probably just enhances it a tad bit more, right? So, jumping on to the first one, what is this? Lock screen. So what happened here? Try to type in the wrong number. Okay, so the password is wrong. So what happened is you get incorrect password. Wait for it. Please try again. So there's a time delay there. So you hit the password, something came up, you have to read it. You understood that. Okay, my password is wrong. I'm gonna type again. Now take the same example but a little different. 
you try to hit your password, use the natural language of the world to tell the user that something went wrong. So you hit the password and it says, it, in order to say that, whoa, it is wrong. Then there's another example. The earlier iterations of Sachin. This is Sachin's playlist, that is Sachin. So Sachin was kind enough to, what do you say, give his playlist to me for designing. So what happens here is, try to click the mini play, mini play bar here. What happens, it is pops up. Nothing fancy, but it does the job. Now think of it this way, what you could do to it. I add a bit of masking, transformation, and this happens. There's this continuity of where the elements were, from where it comes, and where it goes. So this is what the example looked like. One last one, Instagram. So Reels, everyone has been scrolling through Reels, but there was a time when Reels was first introduced. So I think you have seen this, but let's see. Would this be a good UI? Yes, of course you can say it's a good UI. It says swipe, swipe up for more. <laughs> the instruction is clear. You have given, you have been given the instruction what to do. So you take, you process, you swipe up. So that is a good interaction. I mean, that is a good way of presenting the UI. Nothing wrong. So what do you actually do if you wanted to make it a tad bit greater? There you go. Again, the natural instincts kick in. Nudge it up a bit to show that something under, something is there. We have been using this principle all over to show our static screens where, say, there's a carousel, you make a half carousel there at the end to show that something exists there, right? So kind of the same similar principles here. You move the screen, you show a screen, with something, something beneath is actually waiting for you there, swipe up. So this is what the third example looks like. So before we jump into the last segment of this session, I have a recap. So we'll go through what we did. So we went through what motion design is and its essence. Then we visit the timeline, how motion design came into existence and now it is there in full-fledged form in UI UX. We went through the 12 principles of motion design, how all those things. Then we met a couple of tools. These were the tools that you could use to start building your motion design journey. Then we saw some good practices, right? And then we saw some great UIs and there's limitless possibilities. So with this, I recap this session to another segment called Design Drill. So this is what hides behind this, okay? Is a live project that we've been doing. So the context I will set, this is a screen, okay? So this is a bidding platform, right? And there's a card there, it says industrial steel. So probably something has to be done with that steel and bid. There is total demand for the steel, then there is available stock. And there's this list of bidders that you can see. So the concept or logic here is that smaller the bid, the topper your rank is. Cool. So this is a card. And for the admin, probably they're going to be one to four cards. So what his job on a day to day basis might be, watch this numbers, edit it and all that. So watch this numbers, place a bid and edit it. Cool. So say I place a bid. So there's something bid called 118. Did you notice something that happened there? How it came to its how it came to its being after this recap. Something came from bottom. So you know something happened there. Bid amount is there. So there's quantity. I'm going to place a bid now. There's a bit. Okay. So you made a bid. You are rank three, and there's your bid. So say you want to edit this bid and give a better price. Where would you click? Anyone want to give it a try? Sorry. Same button. Wonderful. So 
my drill here is that yes you can click the same button want to try it in some other way do you want to add some effects to it there's definitely some effect that has already been added leave it there it's a ship product whatever it be i would like to know that anyone can give it a shot anything can be registered you can visually think can visually give it a go so you can say how that edit works should there be some interaction or can you think of something that happens when something comes over or something comes under anything salman ba come hi salman so come so what i would what is so what i would actually see there is nothing uh, nothing wrong here in saying any of the uh, what do you say any of the things there is nothing to be judgment law okay everyone here has been going through a journey of motion design there is no uh, expert here or beginner level here anyone can give it a shot so that was the only intention of bringing this you know live project here that's that was the only intention so uh, obviously i am going to click something and it will show something and it ends but i could also get some feedback on probably some kind of input from you the audience so that i can say that okay something has been learned or probably something is going on like you know you have reached somewhere in your journey of motion design also if there is a wonderful feedback to it where i can improve on that feedback that also would be done so do you have any ideations of how this could be edited yeah so this is a bidding platform i think so i'm not sure so what happens is this is a list with uh, an industrial steel as a topic so the bid for the industrial steel was done as a total demand there is an available stock so the bid placed there was a quantity entered and there was a bid entered so lesser the amount you have as bid the top of your score is or top of your rank is so did you see the animation that's happening right so what happens it comes shows and goes back to that place so the question was how would you where would you click and that has been registered in everyone's ears where would you click is the answer yes that's a good answer but do you want to add anything to it that such that the editing experience is good yeah we have a bit here right so is it uh, what do you say is it uh, intuitive enough even if you say no it's fine because it's feedback at the end of the day uh yeah uh, it is uh, like same button we can edit it okay uh, so the bottom uh, right the bottom so, so you would click the bottom yeah bottom button do you want an edit button or something edit to be set somewhere somewhere uh no uh, like since this mobile you are on this is not mobile you this is okay the whole thing okay okay <coughs> no we'll check it over there right. you want to check it over there yeah fine so the smallest thing that was added here was just that small edit so what happened is the place was shown salman correctly identified it all of you identified it so that's what we are drawn to so you try to click it it is going to be edited so but as you hover to that place something came up which is edit so there was a small interaction that was done there in this live project so why we do this as a justification or challenge would be this that this is a place where the numbering of the bid the number the bid the rank and the quantity takes more prevalence than the edit so what he as a person is actually doing is going through the list and you know sorting out what is going on and edit is definitely there and how was that edit uh, what do you say conveyed that the edit actually happened there because as i start the journey i was showing something coming from bottom there was a place bit there place bit now so the person got accustomed accustomed to the fact that there was a button there so what we happened to do is we transform the button to place bit now and again we transform the button to show there's a rank there's a there's a um, there's a price and there's a quantity so thank you could wait can we bring the edit towards the bottom uh, like when we hover it there's like uh, the pop up becomes a little more bigger and the edit comes to the bottom so where you want the edit to be uh, like somewhere over like 
Yeah. Yeah. So you click over here, and this just becomes a little more bigger downwise, and it comes below that. So we can have an idea. A hierarchy of you. Know, you could do that. Yeah. So uh, I think so. What we can do is probably ask Salman to do the same thing as a drill, and probably mail it to us. So uh, yes, Salman, no problem. We will give you the file. So there's nothing to be. What do you say? Okay. Say the main uh, intention of this exercise was. So the main intention of this particular drill was that you know, if someone could give in some ideas that are different from this, we just. Happen to ship it this way, but doesn't matter. So, uh, yes. Yeah. So Salman said, what we could do is, you know, why not bring the edit bottom? So probably what he meant is go all these things go up like before, and edit should come. Salman can probably, you know, send this as a file back, and we will actually review it. No problem. When you said only there was this, cool. That's yet another concern. I understand. So that is some decision as a bias. We took it for themselves because, yeah. So what we did is that through motion, there was what was conveyed was that there's some transformation happening, and a button as such was happening there. So a button, something as this, transformed to the place below. So if there's an edit button, probably yes, that would have been a little more static. We can do it. It is main forward. It is probably aiding the user better. I wouldn't say it is wrong, but this is just yet another design decision that's made in favor of motion design. So this is a design decision. There are going to be biases, and there are going to be debates on why this is this and that. But once the user gets to know how this is done, because that is how it is done, uh, we took the leverage that yes, he is going to understand. This is a place to click. So I think so. Why, when when a lot of people said that this is a place where you click, we could make that statement strong that yes, people are going to click there. So when that kind of confidence was there, we leveraged the opportunity to use a bit of motion design. Anyone else? Yeah. Uh, when the rank. It uh, keeps on going down, or keep, uh, when it's on the first rank, we don't need to edit. Okay, anyone comes before it, just give a copyright above that. Uh, you are in second rank. Uh, do you want to edit? So enhancement. Yeah. So what happens? What uh, your name, please? Don. Don. So what Don said is that uh, give an additional interaction. They're saying that oh, you dropped in rank, and you could probably give an edit there. Yeah. That is a good answer. Yeah. Anyone else? Jiku. Okay, so the question is what actually Don said. Could you actually, what do you say, enhance this user interface to something with interactions? You know, make up more interactions, just like I showed you. An edit happens here with hover. This is how the edit was designed. Like so, what Don said is that you know what you should do. Uh, you wear first for some time. So when the system, you wear first for some time. So what happens is, there's a bid there. The lesser the amount of bid, the top of your rank will be. So If you fall below, like someone made a bit like 117, and you made 118, then you fall in rank. So what Don was trying to say is that, you know what? Let the system decide. You know, let the system in back end realize that something has happened, that your top position has gone. Alert it there somewhere, saying that hey, you know what? You fell in rank. Show an edit. Enhance. Yeah. Anything enhancement? Yeah. Uh, where? When, when, your when your rank updates. Yeah. For example, my rank updates. It went to third. Okay. Last that happened, it goes there, and then there was a back, there was a background. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Go. 
Okay. Okay. So. Yeah. No, this is, a, this is not a debate of good or bad. Just want some kind of enhancements to it, and just want to listen to all you people. Like, what do you think outside the box? Yeah. Fair play. Okay. Okay. I think this is going to trigger a lot of uh, design versus developer uh, debates here. Okay, anyway. Okay. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Anyone else? Context went slab. So you understood the context? Not really. So what we was what we are doing here is that we said this is a bidding screen. So this is a bidding platform. So this is a bidding card. So that is the thing that is being bidded for in this steel. Uh, okay. Huh? Okay. Yeah. What happened is, yeah, you place the bid, you happen beyond three. Okay, I was asking. Uh, so I'm the user. Yeah. I placed a bid. So uh, right now I'm placed at number three. So why is my bid green and all ever? I mean, everything else is also green. Okay. So I'm not going into motion design. That's no, the first no, thing I that came to mind. Okay. So why is everything? We was basically just trying to normalize it. That's it. All the bid was there. The choice of design used there was you. See, as a user, my uh, preference would be seeing my bid first, or uh, that should be the first priority, right? Instead of seeing uh, my all the bids bid together. first. Uh, to that question, your bid to be first need to be lesser. Maybe in a different color. Probably in a different color. Yes, I think so. Even uh, Jiku said that. Other than that, and while sitting at the back, uh, rear end, I thought the last one is a button. Yeah, it is. But after coming here, I doesn't really feel like a button. Other than <laughs> okay, I have to pick sides here. All right. So this See, is. See, I yeah. would say there are three data on that particular uh, area okay. button. So. Personally, I won't really think that it's a clickable one. Usually, button will be having only one data or one text. Here, okay. I'm so having three datas. I think so. Probably most of people miss the first session's context. That's the reason why these questions arise. So, probably during that state, yes, his her question is relevant. So, what happened is there was a bit placement. Something start from. Do you actually see that? Hmm? So there was actually a place bit now button hmm. that got transformed to this. Okay. So all those things, activities there, was what is expanded to that, and it comes back what is collapsed to that state. Okay, so probably that the is. user a, would be seeing that expanded one, then he will be seeing this shortened version. Yeah. So one second, let me just take it. I'll show you again. Yeah. 
this was initial screen. So what happened is, this was the interaction that was followed, which is we tried to place a bid. Something came up from there, which is the overlay, saying that you have to enter a bid amount, make a bit of, I mean, enter the quantity, which is 7,500, and there was a button there, bid now. So this was the context that was set. I think so, a couple of users here understood that there's a transformation that was happening there, and something has reduced to the form of a button back. So my question initially was, how do you actually edit this same state? So to which I got two answers. One was create a label difference here as your rank goes down and an edit could come there. And there was yet another answer saying that on top you could say that alert the user saying, you know what, you fell down in rank, edit. There was two ideations. So this is just one ideation. You can criticize this, it's all fine. So what here, how it was done is that we try to click that button, edit comes over. Simple as that. So the point in time, what I was trying to ask is that, do you have something to enhance this further in a much better way? Why can't we keep the edit option earlier? Edit option? I mean, when the, but, uh, in the second step, when it, everything was coming up, there we can give the edit option, right? We didn't place a bid. First, you need to place a bid. This is something happening real time. After placing the bid, you can edit. Yeah, because what happens is when you place a bid, the context is this. This is the rank list that goes on. This happens real time. So you say you place a bid of 118. It goes on the screen. They say it's like, you know, 3U, that's the place, that is the bid that you made. So in order to come to the top position, you have to probably change the bid. So once you have to place a bid, it comes on the screen, then you have to edit. Okay, uh, not going into motion design and everything, what I'm thinking is maybe my bid would be given in a different color and I don't want that 3118 over there, just the amount would be there and an edit option over there. Okay. Yeah, that would so that is a yeah that is definitely one of the answers do you want to enhance it some way so that was the whole concept of this show maybe i'm a bit biased because <laughs> the first thing that came to my mind is everything is in green i want a different color okay so that's her answer saying that yeah this she will just have the button there with the number and an edit button that just comes in as you know uh, her her bit needs to come below here in priority saying that you need to edit it you just need to explicitly have edit button there. That's it. I mean, my option is already there in the list. I want that particular one to be highlighted. So it moves in real time. So what happens if it falls to 10? We can actually eliminate the bottom option, right? So what happens if it falls from 3 to 10? Hmm? So it keeps shifting from 3 to 10 because it's a real time bit. Uh, I have seen in certain cases, like if it's dipping, we'll be giving a downward arrow. And if it's moving upward, we'll be giving an upward arrow with so if there's a hundred uh, bid options there, so what happens is you go down all the way till hundred. No, we can. Mm. No, this is never a debate. You don't have to <laughs> yeah. think in that way. It's never a debate. So that is just a question. So. Yeah, nothing like that. Just so what happens is, she gave an answer which is very relevant. So what she was trying to say is that, take prevalence over that particular, what do you say? bit that she placed and what she meant was that give more attention to that. So it could be probably somewhere over here or probably there itself. It remains sticky, could have been the answer. So what we're trying to convey was that. So making it sticky and probably you could have the animations there. It could have been in uh, dynamic inline edit there, whatever it is. So yeah, that's it. Thank you. So there was one of the live exercises just presented to know your, what do you say, uh, opinions and thoughts because design as such is going to be bias center to be honest, okay? Say you have a design, uh, someone makes some kind of decisions because some decisions has to be made because that's how you ship products because you can't sit in the office and, you know, go along with all these things in one point or the other. But some pros will be there, some cons will be there. We know that and we'll be shipping it, right? And if there is a lot of issues that come related to that, we'll be changing our mind to something much better. So that is the crux of what this is. And with that, yeah. With that, we come to the conclusion. Oops, give me a minute.
okay spirit intervention okay so what happened here is uh, something anyway so this is the conclusion to the show that was happening here so we had our live what do you say interaction with a drill so with conclusion we want to say is that you know uh, we as a team has been on this perpetual quest in trying to learn what motion design is and the whole motive of this entire exercise was that so we've been trying to excel in this area so what we understood is that this motion design as a field uh, though it takes time to learn uh, though it takes developmental time again to bring it into implementation and all those things are fair enough yeah but you need to give it a push to normalize something so we took that as uh, as you would you say as a luxury and we just came up with the came up with the cost that we need to learn this you need to experiment more with this because this has been an enhancement okay experiment more and we understood that there is a lot of potential and reasoning and art as you implement these decisions to it because as we went through this conclusion i mean as we went through this session from a to b you know each principle had its reasons like this is why you use a this is why you use this b and you don't have to memorize it but you understood there is something core principles that work behind all the things that you see and obviously it is open to debate just like any art form motion is an art so it is open to debate we can debate on it all day all long but yeah so that was the crux of this session and why motion design probably would be another statement would be that you know there would be times when when you present a static screen to a client we have been going through it and we have the scar tissues to show it he might not just understand what is going on yeah i understood but that is too generic that is too generic what is going on and all those things and during those times we have had motions you know just complementing some actions you know moving something there okay this shows that node shows something is happening there so that was the back story of that so you know introducing motion design into your work could actually reduce screens and also enhance the design to the fullest and we believe through this session that we would have let the light for more people to join in our quest thank you so that's it any more debates or questions any question guys i was explaining to her like uh, paru paru malu malu is the malu 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 is the you had shots actually she was talking to empty chairs <laughs> when she was introducing uh, your shots so uh, i think majority of you are coming to uh, fireport 80 for the first time right from the ux no yeah so uh, it is also about uh, collaborative discussion like different people can uh, come and uh, uh, with different perspectives so i was explaining to her that sort of discussion will happen at the end of the session and that is one of the most important part of i about it so it is not just like one person come and uh, give his gear to others so uh, he should also be able to take a lot of uh, inputs from the audience because you also come from different companies from different perspectives uh, uh, so i just want to get your feedback for him first so can uh, someone introduce yourself and just give inputs and then and then malu is there she will they have a community for user experience which is called ux shorts so uh, she will also give you a brief on how to join that and um, after each fire party normally uh, fire party brings together people of similar interest to one room so the uh, last it was on tailwind it happened so that uh, css community came together so today it is user experience so uh, you should uh, also try to know about each other and get connected and keep that connection uh, to build something uh, engaging that is continuous for, for continuous engagement okay so you can the mic and just get people thanks debu thanks a lot 
Okay, so uh, I would like to go back to 2019 when UX Shorts was formed. Okay, we had a known community. So whenever we did every month sessions or articles, like the faces were very similar. So we knew in Technopark, this is the UX you know, enthusiast community. I don't see anybody here other than Kishore, who is a dear friend and, you know, big support to UX Shots. So uh, we would want to do more sessions on user experience. So if there are any UX enthusiasts here who would want to introduce and, you know, tell us your pain point or how is your UX experience so far or in your company, are you just wireframe vending machines? I would really uh, love to take opinion on that. So I think uh, from what I saw from Ashish's session, Dawn was there very interactive and then Deepu was pulling a lot of people from here and there. But I think uh, as a UX designer, you need to talk, you need to communicate and that is a primary skill. So we go with this handsome boy. Pradesh, Pradesh. ആർട്ടിസ്റ്റ് ആണ് ഇതെങ്ങനെന്ത് <laughs> 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 like uh, we usually work with like we have like uh, e-commerce platforms and like erp systems and the uh, uh, warehouse management systems and so we usually work in those would you like to try uh, some like concept of motion design in your projects or was this session useful to him or do we have to improve more or do you want to like to like hear more topics from us any topic of interest okay he says he is he has done mba new to ux why ux like i had a passion so so you have a passion then that that's the important thing right anybody want to share anything so kishore is a very uh, senior person in ux i know him very well do you want to hi faya hi ashish uh, it was a very wonderful presentation once again a very good applause uh, i love this presentation not only the uh, way of the presentation was also very good the topic was also very good because it is innovative and people need to know Thank you. more on ux and uh, Thank you. it's Thank not you. just about uh, having a theoretical knowledge of all these theories and all but we need to know how the user feels and uh, how we can make it feel i mean this is a motion design is one of the key important thing and uh, there are a lot of aspects i didn't i mean actually i didn't get anything from the net and you will help me to learn all these things thank you so much and uh, thank you gosh i expect more things from your shots like this thank you malu for inviting me thanks kishore anybody else wants to say something some feedback about the session or you want to learn ux or anything because what's your friend's name don that's not your friend are you a ux designer yes you know i'm working at infin you working at infosys infin dig more some of my projects are at tech they should know baran session nice irunu ഞാൻ ഇത് ആദ്യമായിട്ടാണ് ഫസ്റ്റ് 
Any inputs? Jikun abe pura ila da dibu ne baca tila, ada yang dorang. Kenapa alat cerita ni kerja tu? Biasa, ini kau urik karya yang cuci kena dengar tu. Ingin aku urik group orang karya ini kau urik tila tu. Because I'm very fascinated about UX and UX designer orang orang claim je anu latar arah villa, but I'm very fascinated about this. Ado orang angin itu itu physically ni kau meeting orang. Okay, so ipun kor si kali itu orang meeting pun illa, if you ask me, physical meeting pun illa, virtual meeting pun illa, because we started January 2019, and we started because even the company which we are working, every month UX session awareness kudu talam, there is either a PM or a developer or even a designer who is confused between UX and UI, which is like a debate for ever. And uh, either UX or you know, UI or like a lot of confusion. So that is why we started this and we started by writing blogs in uxshorts.in. Okay, just to spread awareness about user experience. And then as and when we started interacting with people, we understood that there are a lot of youngsters and even like, you know, nalla experience all alkare who would love to learn about UX. Yes. UX shorts in Atho. UX shorts in Atho Pandurandu Veri Olu. Nyaam Parni Kainila Jikku. Okay. So, then we started doing like first event to say that a community was formed. And that was like a big community. Nyaam Kuru LinkedIn group Oka Inda Arno. We had a very active participation. And as you said, young, vibrant Dana, all the members. So, we were like up to 6 to 7 plus like 50 to 60 people of UX enthusiasts all throughout Kerala. Okay. And we did like a lot of sessions on different topics. Over session Karimbidum like meetups like this. People come in say next to the each session Vanamna Parnita. We were bringing in people. We were also taking sessions. And parallelly we were writing blogs. Then what happened? Covid time in Arizona, Yangala Kochi chapter on the expansion. That was 2020. And then it did not happen at all. So we started like teaming up with GTEC and doing webinars on different UX topics. Then what happened is like, you know, the each to do that face to face kind of sessions, meeting people, networking was not happening. And uh, I believe we all were hibernating happily. And then this Dibu called and said, and then in a session, he started nudging and that is when this session happened. So I think this will be the start of again a lively community where we want to see UX people in the same platform, talk to them, understand pain points and improve ourselves. So that is the idea. I hope I answered your question now. Yes. Any other feedback is welcome. If not, we can wind yeah. up this session. Uh, like any uh, doubt on the Yes, sir. Uh, so maybe like I was not part of the first section. Uh, okay. Sure. So yeah, any cure doubt on Why were you late? <laughs> uh, actually. <laughs> And packing to you, know, like I'm going to Dubai, so. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, yeah, so the question was like uh, motion design, uh, UX, then UI, and developers. So, so let's categorize into three, motion design, UX, and UI, and developers. <laughs> so what happens is we uh, develop UI with uh, great intensity, and we bring, we try to bring in motion designs and all. Uh, but the most common question which we get is like, the, for example, the hover thing which we did, like edit for that hovering. So the developers say, why can't you just keep it above, just edit, and it saves a lot of time for us. So like even in uh, thinking in UX perspective, that is much more, uh, you know, like uh, it applies to the logics of UX and all. It's like it is more favorable that we keep it above simply where it is visible to everyone's eyes. Uh, one thing. And the next thing is like, uh, for example, the dynamic island of the uh, Apple. So under all UX, uh, this thing, uh, like laws, it defies many of them. Like it is not reachable to your hand, uh, you know, why simply bring. So like how we can, in, like, like uh, it's like whether it's like you have to look into the looks or the usability part. So that is what comes between the development and UX. So how to incorporate this? 
uh, by is this actually needed when the users uh, it's only thing is that we're giving benefit to the users by visually and it is not bringing that much big of an impact uh, that is what most of the time people say so uh, Salma, my question is i think i said in the starting of the session uh, will your room that you love have mediocre things or the best things there say it say you're going to buy a laptop okay, okay. say you're going to buy something with uh, probably what phone you have iPhone. iPhone. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, that's one of the answers I would like to give you. Okay. So definitely functionality is there. But to this point now, what is that functionality is already there that we know what is going to happen. Right. It's already stagnantly there. Yeah. But and the change that we have to make is, you know, add some flair to it. Okay. Because everything, the, the mindset of trying to stay at the same place is what makes your skill set stagnant. That was my starting uh, statement when I started this session. So when you try to improve or try to explore the dimensions of what motion, I mean, design world as such is, you know, to know it fully, you probably need to know what motion design is, sound design is, and all those things. Because these things, as a personal person, you enjoy. Like say you see Swiggy moving through all those things, wow, it's wonderful, okay? And you always give them the idealist at least award. Okay, wow, they are doing it. But when we do it in our work, or when we try to deliver it something to the client, we want it. We want it to be the old mediocre thing. And what happens if the client says, "I have seen this a thousand times. Why don't you bring something out of the box?" So that is one question that usually comes in. What do you say? In count, and this could be a debate, and it would never end. And yes, developers also should be. What do you say? Should have the same passion in this field to actually do it. Right, so as I said, After Effects has a lot of things that motion design could be used to, and you can directly plug it to HTML, CSS to have it. So uh, to answer your question, yeah, I hope I answered it. That's because and Salman, I want to add a point there. Okay, we have the designers, developers, and you said users as the last part of it. Users in a manning is different from style. It is not that. Okay, user experience in you is for user, which we all fail to understand. Uh, we may do it, uh, whatever it is. Pakshya, at the end of the day, you are doing it for a bunch of users who is going to actually use your system. So if they don't like it, if the client says or the user says, I don't like it, then it makes sense. Otherwise, we cannot assume these things. Developers, designers, it is for the users, which is the most important part. Apo, user friend, we happy perspective. I think it will answer your question. Yeah, okay. Developer. Hi, hi. Oh, developers in the point of view, uh, first of all, the slides were really nice. Thank you. Thank you. But our parallax and like explanation was really good. In a developers in the point of view, Noka and Angel Yanka, three would do freed up Kitu like three animations implement the unloaded time. It's really good. As I don't think it's beautiful. Mikapoyan is another basic is in, is out, basic function, so it's all a sign and a lot of chaya. Pin UX in the part of the no as a developer in the point of view, let the click to go to campatum. Users in a scrolling types go to campatum. So, do you actually count your clicks when you do some jobs? Sorry? Do you actually count the clicks as you do every task in your life? Sometimes when I say design, I will think about how quickly a person, like a thola easy at all. Functionality completely, I'm better than all the other things. So, uh, what happens? Aesthetics are good. Aesthetics are good. For example, if depends upon an application. If I have a shopping application on that, then I have to show beautiful products and showcase them. Or I have to add animations to that. But at the same time, I have a flat in mind. I have a relief application on that. Then my point of view will be like, better than fast at the prototype. Then, but the whole another startup in the point of view, then I give them startups in a when the sadhanam do a quick product release here. But then again, that is mainstreaming of flood as a cause to save your statement. And when I para again, I'm not going to try to debate to that yeah. deep level. The thing is that we as humans want some kind of bias. That's the main statement. We want some bias that we want to think in some ways. Yeah. So this is what is true and nice, right? So if you want, you see, it depends on the statement. Even uh, there are good applications. Probably I need some time. I could show that. They are doing it well. Just because that we didn't get the opportunity to explore, or we are not staying in that place where we couldn't explore, it doesn't mean that you know all the apps that are going to be designed there, all the enterprises apps that will be designed forever will be like that. Probably the best example I could give is that enterprises app as Asana came. 
or probably Jira came. All those things are hugely, what do you say, complex status, but still, uh, and my point is not like, you know, flooded with motion is in all the places, but there are interactions that are subtle. Uh, recently, for example, Asana actually gives you this, uh, what do you say, this icon that says when you complete a task, you know, it gives you a very, very, very beautiful interaction. So this is a subjective topic, I do understand. But the thing is, trying to say, like, I am actually biased there, you are actually biased there, there are two coins there. So the thing is, exploring is the answer to that. You have to explore, because when you say that this is how it is done, this is all the way it is, you are not going to actually look, because you are restraining yourself. You are trying to restrain yourself from looking further into what actually could make it beautiful. And when you understand this whole topic as such, okay, you don't need to actually imply it all. You know, you, you yourself, when you get into these things and when you try to practice this in form, you will for definitely for sure find ways in which, uh, how you tweak these things to your, you know, what do you say, to your workflow. Not, not the whole thing as an ease and ease or whatever it is. You, know, you can actually tweak those things to uh, fit into your workflow better. So that is actually the answer to that. Uh, and when you said, what is it? Uh, flood applications. That is an emergency application, flood relief oh, or yeah, whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. Uh, you don't need to actually put a, a whole lot of drop down on because those things are actually meant on the emotions of stress or whatever it is. We definitely know that this is a situation. We won't actually do a full of what you say, splash screen or all those things. But Paksha, there are eight Paksha, of the uh, applications. Sorry for interrupting you. But if we have a cancel button, we will have a problem with that. It's not about making it more beautiful. How, how, how this uh, problem on the argument statement, how do you think, basic, what is it, basically try to frame is because, I mean, I, corona no under, illa no under. I mean, it goes on and on, right? It's going to be exchange of punches for all day long. Because you're trying to assume the user will be doing that. I'm trying to assume that the user will be doing that. So now the statement point is, how do I advocate for motion design and how he will advocate for uh, development? I think so. Yeah, yeah. I, I appreciate your passion, passion towards motion designing and UX. But uh, you made a statement just before: developers should have that passion to do it. Yeah. Why you said so? I don't get the point. Like, see, developers are doing have the it. What I, what I said is that there are equally like people. See, you don't have to treat this as development. What you said, different departments. You're from fire department. I'm from police department. Whatever it is, what we're trying to do is. We as a team call it as an experience department. So if I don't work pro properly, it won't be good for you as well. So if you don't work properly, you know, it's basically trying to find the common ground. Find the common ground where we can agree on things. But at the same time, when I was trying to force these points, this definitely obviously on 90% of the commercial apps or the things that could be made interesting. And definitely I was not holding what is a risk application into this picture. And I hope that is clear from this. Yeah, yeah. And one more doubt I had, like you showed that application, right? There was a like a, a challenge which you had a dashboard which has a trading option and the question was there. Yeah. In that, that UI was looking like a mobile UI. Yeah, that was just for India reasons. We just showed one card. Probably there are going to be a lot of cards there. So that particular platform had multiple objects there that need to be built on. So say there's steel, there is iron, there is coal. So that is just, yeah, it's a web thing. So what happened is that particular card had the interaction. So as a component such as that, what I was trying to say. So there are multiple cards, same interface design within that canvas. Yeah, but you had to explain it to me. Like when I saw it first, right? I thought it was a mobile view. And you were showing like hovering on it with a mouse arrow, cursor. Hovering, for showing that hovering is never for mobile. How do you hover on a mobile? Yeah, that's what my question. I saw. I can. I thought yeah. it was a mobile screen. Cool, cool. So when you are developing or designing web so I don't. Uh, I don't know more about UX. So I follow design systems most of the time. Okay. So whenever you are showing a cart like this in a wide screen, it was a dashboard. You are showing it at center. When you are showing these kinds that of things, one of the components. So probably that I is how we did not explain the yeah. component. You are right there. Yes. yes. You can actually use something like a negative spacing to make it easier for people to understand. My, right. Uh, so what is she is trying to say is that that card didn't exist there on itself. That page was filled due to NDA reasons. We are not revealing the entire uh, project. Ashish, I think we did not explain that. Yeah, probably, uh, when yes. we were telling about the scenario, we did not explain that. That is a feedback. Yes, okay. we take it. Yes. 
yeah okay thank you anyways it was really good thank like you. i really learned a lot of things like showing parallax small small things it was really good thank you and i think we coexist okay there is uh, nothing like a developer and designer because yeah. without developers we don't exist yeah. and without designers you don't exist so it's proper pure, pure coexistence and i think that has to be there there's always a fire when a designer and developer talks and <laughs> yeah because when i said even passion he got uh, i think something what i correct yeah Correct. I think the passion word is what uh, triggered it, and yeah. Yeah. Uh, good evening. I am Anand Parabimal. I am a third year computer science student. I am B Tech. So, in this doubt, then I will give you a little informative little thing. I am going to give you a little point of view. I am developers' point of view. I am actually working in WordPress. So, like, I am now. So, like, I am working in WordPress. 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 So, अवधा न्यानी पोरी यू लाइक एंड क्लाइंट सिंड इधानो इन्हीं कार्य के तले इन्हीं के टेक लाइंट सिंड का प्रत्येक दिन जाए न्यानी पोरी यू उधर स्क्रॉल एम बोरी बैकग्राउंड ला पिक्चर बैकग्राउंड आर्ट डिवेलप पिक्चर उन स्क्रॉल एम उन नींगी आलो अंगने रीडी ले कैसे आरंडे बिन्ना चरिया रिया लेके तक मोशन डिस but if you want to click on the button or click on the mode, you can use the client's way to click on the button. As I used to say, if you want to click on the button, you can only do some of the animations, but After Effects can do a lot of things. So that is actually tool level. The answer to that is tool level, there are limitations. And what you are actually doing is motion design. Either you try to move something, all those things. If that can be incorporated in WordPress, yes, well and good. That is never something, what do you say? Uh, against you and if you try to do something is probably because what do you say, say someone didn't understand something that is about how do you convey this message just as I said all these things to him see this is what is going on uh, we are using WordPress okay we tried a new thing uh, this is how it's going on and usually WordPress doesn't have it explore about this like Iran this look so it's more about how you what do you say Con yeah convey in sense convey the story I would say as I said, there's always an intention and reasoning behind this particular thing. So tell him. So this is actually how it exists. And this is why you do it. Yeah, sure. Hello. So actually, uh, it's not a uh, WordPress limitation. Uh, WordPress is themes under. So, uh, so themes are So it's not a WordPress limitation. Maybe uh, it is a template the theme we are using. Okay. So, but there is an option we can also like, build our own custom theme where we can do anything. Yeah, that's what I said. Uh, yeah. Template. Yeah, I was wrong. Template. No, no, no. It's not wrong. I'm just correcting it. Right. Communicating. Sure. Uh, So, uh, so uh, you said about WordPress. I'm what I know about WordPress is this. I have uh, been through WordPress designs. So, as he said, there are templates there. The templates. So remember, there's a fixed theme. So, in that theme, if those things were supported, you can use it. So, probably, if you want to grow beyond that, you need to create your own custom theme, like how to go above and beyond that particular your know, template behavior. And if you're asking me if is there anything else that you could use other than other than what you say WordPress as a plugin? I would say use Framer or learn a bit of HTML CSS so that you get the grip of Webflow. These things actually, you know, directly help you get into the world of motion. You know, and directly you can see it in your eyes. You develop it is there on the screen. It's just as simple as that. And if you want to learn uh, After Effects, you can do that as well. In After Effects, there are plugins called Body Move-in, Loti files, all those things. What you actually do is clip this as a video, like you make this motion graphics, and try to actually uh, pin it to the scroll, scroll action, right? So that's what I think Apple is doing, this massive parallax effects and all those, what they do is, it's a player video in scroll hijack. So that's what is happening. Hope I could answer your question, okay. Yeah, John. Question, uh, feedback, I don't know. Thank you. Uh, basically, I am a developer. I am actually session get it. Vanna kollan thoda. But then I am vanna. I am first course version miss out. I I missed it. Correct. Vanna kollan thoda. Yeah. Okay. Abam basically, I am a developer. 
നമുക്ക് കൂടുതലും ഡിസൈനേഴ്സ് തരുന്ന സ്റ്റാറ്റിക് ഡിസൈൻസ് ആണ് നമ്മൾ ഡെവലപ്പ് ചെയ്ത് വരുമ്പോഴത്തേക്കും വി യൂസ് ഡിഫറെന്റ് ആപ്ലിക്കേഷൻ ലൈക് സ്വിഗ്ഗി ക്രെഡ് ദേ ഹാവ് ഓസം ഡിസൈൻസ് ലൈക്ക് അത് കാണുമ്പോൾ നമ്മൾ ഡിസൈൻ നമുക്ക് വരുന്നത് ഒരു മാതിരി പേപ്പറിൽ വരച്ചിരിക്കുന്ന മാതിരി ഒരു സാധനം ക്ലയന്റ് കൊടുത്തു കഴിയുമ്പോഴത്തേക്കും ക്ലയന്റ് ദേ ഹാവ് സീൻ ദിസ് ഡിസൈൻ യൂസിങ് ഫിക്മ പ്രോട്ടോടൈപ്പ് കണ്ടത് തന്നെ നമ്മൾ ഉണ്ടാക്കി കൊടുത്തേക്കാന്ന് തോന്നുന്നു അല്ലാതെ നമുക്കൊരു ഇൻട്രാക്ഷൻ ഫീൽ ഫീൽ ഗുഡ് ഹോർമോൺസ് കൊണ്ട് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ആ ഒരു ഫീച്ചറിനെ ഒന്ന് എൻഹാൻസ് ചെയ്യാന്ന് പറയുന്ന ഡിസൈൻ ഇതുണ്ട് പക്ഷെ അത് ചെയ്യാൻ അധികം ആൾക്കാർ ഇരിക്കാറില്ല അത് ഒന്നാമത്തെ കാര്യം കുറെ ഡെവലപ്മെന്റ് പ്ലാറ്റ്ഫോമിൽ ഇറ്റ് വിൽ ടേക്ക് ടൈം ബട്ട് ഞാൻ യൂസ് ചെയ്യുന്ന ഞാൻ കൂടുതൽ മൊബൈൽ ആപ്ലിക്കേഷൻസ് ആണ് ബിൽഡ് ചെയ്യുന്നത് മൊബൈൽ ആപ്ലിക്കേഷൻ ഞാൻ യൂസ് ചെയ്യുന്ന ഫ്ലോട്ട് ദേ ഹാവ് മൾട്ടിപ്പിൾ പ്ലഗിൻസ് ആൻഡ് ഇറ്റ്സ് ഈസി ടു ഇംപ്ലിമെന്റ് ഓൺ ഫ്ലോട്ട് ബട്ട് നമ്മൾ ഫീച്ചേഴ്സ് ആഡ് ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ നമുക്ക് എന്ത് ചെയ്യണം ഇവിടുന്ന് അങ്ങോട്ട് പോകുമ്പോൾ നമുക്ക് അങ്ങനെ ചിന്തിക്കാനുള്ളൊരു കേപ്പിബിലിറ്റി കിട്ടുന്നില്ല അപ്പൊ നമ്മൾ ഒരു ഫീച്ചർ ചെയ്യുന്ന വേറെ ഫീച്ചർ വരുമ്പോഴത്തേക്ക് നമുക്ക് ഇരുന്ന് ഡ്രീം ചെയ്യാനോ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ അതിനെ പറ്റി അനിമേറ്റ് ചെയ്യുന്ന നമ്മൾ കുറെ കൺസിനേറ്റീവ്സ് കണ്ടിട്ടുണ്ടോ എന്ന് വെച്ചാൽ ബേസിക്സ് ഒക്കെ നമ്മൾ ചെയ്യാറുള്ളൂ അപ്പം അത് ആ ഒരു ഐഡിയേഷൻ കിട്ടാൻ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ഈ ഈ മോഷൻ ഡിസൈനിങ്ങിന് കുറച്ചും കൂടെ പഠിക്കാൻ എന്തെങ്കിലും റിസോഴ്സസ് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ അത് അതിന് പറ്റിയ കണ്ടൻസ് എല്ലാം കിട്ടാൻ മാർഗമുണ്ടോ by android i think they have this design guidelines that show the entire motion motion kodukana yeah motion transitions nokka parne like there's i think so separate resource just for that like how motions work in each from like that standard yeah basic atla ipo ipo parna idile design principles and motions okku but actually namukku end of the day implementation la varuna ipo korcha examples kanu chudu implementation la varuna inde korcha inspiration ya mikkoram dribble okke aanu nammal kaanu but adallade നമുക്കൊരു നമുക്കൊരു യു ഐ കൈക്ക് എടുക്കുന്നുണ്ട് അത് യു ഐ ഡിസൈനേഴ്സ് അത് മാക്സിമം ചെയ്തു തരേണ്ടതാണ് ബട്ട് അവര് ഒരു കാര്യം കൂടി പറയാനായിട്ടുള്ളത് നമ്മുടെ നോർമലി നമ്മുടെ കമ്പനികളിലെ വർക്ക് ഫ്ലോ എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് വയർ ഫ്രെയിം ഡിസൈൻ ഡെവലപ്മെന്റ് എന്നുള്ളതാണ് സോ ഇതിനിടയിൽ ഒരു തേർഡ് ഒരു ഇന്ററാക്ഷൻ യൂസർ ഇന്ററാക്റ്റീവ് ഡിസൈൻ എന്ന് പറയുന്ന ഒരു ഫേസ് കൂടി നോർമലി വരും അതായത് വയർ ഫ്രെയിം കഴിഞ്ഞ് ഡിസൈൻ കഴിഞ്ഞതിന് ശേഷം ഒരു ഫേസ് കൂടി സാധാരണ കമ്പനീസിൽ ഉണ്ടാവാറുണ്ട് അത് ഇവിടെ മോസ്റ്റ്ലി സർവീസ് കമ്പനീസിൽ മിസ്സിംഗ് ആണ് എന്നുള്ളതാണ് അവിടുത്തെ ഒരു പ്രോബ്ലം ബിക്കോസ് അവിടെയാണ് ഈ അനിമേഷൻസും ഈ കാര്യങ്ങളും യൂസർ ഇന്ററാക്റ്റീവ് ഇന്ററാക്ട് ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ എന്താ സംഭവിക്കുന്നത് എന്നുള്ളത് ഡിഫൈൻ ചെയ്യപ്പെടുന്നത് അത് നമ്മുടെ വർക്ക് ഫ്ലോയിൽ തന്നെ മിസ്സിംഗ് ആണ് എന്നുള്ളതാണ് പലപ്പോഴും ആ ഒരു കാര്യം വരാതിരിക്കാനുള്ള റീസൺ ലൈക്ക് അപ്പൊ നമുക്കിപ്പോ ഒരു ഗ്രൂപ്പ് ഉണ്ടെന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാൽ ആ ഗ്രൂപ്പിൽ ഇതിനെ പറ്റിയുള്ള ഡിസ്കഷൻസ് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ഇൻസ്പിറേഷൻസ് കിട്ടാൻ എന്തെങ്കിലും അതിനകത്ത് കമ്മ്യൂണിക്കേഷൻസ് ഗോയിങ് ഓൺ എങ്ങനെ ജോയിൻ ചെയ്യാൻ പറ്റും യു എക്ക് ഷോർട്സിനകത്ത് എത്ര രൂപയാണ് ഞങ്ങൾ തരേണ്ടത് യു എക്ക് ഷോർട്സിന് ജോയിൻ ചെയ്യാൻ യാ ഇപ്പം നമ്മുടെ ഇവിടെ ചേട്ട യു എ ഇതിൽ ആനിമേഷനിൽ വർക്ക് ചെയ്തിട്ടുണ്ടോ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ചെയ്ത വർക്ക്സ് ഇങ്ങനെ ഇന്ററാക്റ്റീവ് ബട്ടൺസ് ഒക്കെ ചെയ്തിട്ടുണ്ടോ സോ വാട്ട് ഐ പേഴ്സണലി ഡിഡ് ഇൻ മൈ ടീം ഈസ് ദിസ് ലൈക്ക് ബിക്കോസ് ആസ് ഐ സെറ്റ് ദർ ടു കൈൻഡ്സ് ഓഫ് പീപ്പിൾ ഓക്കെ വൺ ഇസ് വെരി മച്ച് ഇൻക്ലൈൻ ടു ദ ഫംഗ്ഷണാലിറ്റി സൈഡ് ഫെയർ പ്ലൈ ആൻഡ് ദർ ഇസ് മോഷൻ പീപ്പിൾ സോ ദർ ബി എ ടൈം വെൻ ഐദർ ഓഫ് ദം കുഡ് ബി എന്താ പറയുന്നത് ബോർ അടിച്ചു സോ സ്വിച്ച് ഇൻ ടു ദ നെക്സ്റ്റ് ടു സി വാട്ട് ഹാപ്പൻസ് ആൻഡ് വൈ ഐ സെറ്റ് സോ ബിക്കോസ് ഐ ഹാവ് എ കൊലീഗ് ഓഫ് മൈൻഡ് ഹൂ സെറ്റ് യു നോ വാട്ട് ഐ ബിൻ ഡൂയിങ് വൈ ഫ്രെയിംസ് ഓക്കെ ഐ ബിക്കേം അറ്റ് എ സ്റ്റേജ് വേ ഐ എം ഡൂയിങ് യു ഐ ഓക്കെ ആൻഡ് യു ഐ now has design systems all i need to do is pick drop finish okay. and didn't i get stuck in this so i particularly told that person like you know what what do you try the dimensions such as that and that was a statement actually that i that was an inspiration that i took
what do you say, groups, or when there were projects that were going on, uh, could we sit on this? Could we improve this? And that was one example that I showed you. Mm -hmm. One of the exercises, simply one of the exercises, and the project actually exists. All right. So never because it's still going on the development. So yes, there will be backfiring. Uh, there will be what do you say debates, but we have to settle it. And if you hold as she said silos of you know you do this, I do that, mm -hmm. it won't actually work out. So as a developer, actually, I'm proud of you that you have. That uh, this is the only thing that I actually require everyone think in the same line. Okay, I'm not like what do you say? I'm the motion designer. You are the what do you say developer, and you do this and that. Either of them need to know about this. So if there are limitations, learn about what this coding thing does. So that is the reason why I said like yeah, I understand. Why if, I mean WordPress has limitations as a template because I took some time to understand what WordPress is. So it is about the what do you say? The mindset to go and learn. And if I could help, definitely I will help. So if you want to contact me, sure, okay. make a call or uh, tweet. And you ask me for resources. So at the moment, I was like frozen what to say. Uh, get yourself an account in Twitter. There are a lot of people I could suggest who are doing wonderful job, who are developers and motion designers and designers. So this designation change, OK, service companies, or who are of this, leave that aside. Think of yourself as an experience or digital designer, OK? You could develop because obviously you need to develop that, then only the product exists. You could design, you could develop, you could do all the things that you want. So as a person as you, how your skill set improves. That is the only thing I would say as an outcome for the session. Improve yourself. You don't have to think of how companies design their designations. Think of yourself as a what you say, digital designer and go into it. And there are a lot of Twitter. Twitter is one of the best platforms, I would say, to uh, hunt for all these people. There are a lot of people, probably there are a lot of Webflow enthusiasts, and there is a framer community. Go into framer community and see about various templates. And when you try to break it down, you can see how those animations are done. Okay, okay that's framer community. Is there. And there's a Figma community that does a lot of, what do you say, uh, animated works. Vijay Verma would be one of the options, okay? Uh, and similarly, framer, Webflow, and Figma. These have communities with files that you can access and actually go through it and, and see how the working is. So once you start understanding how that works, you know, beautiful things start coming automatically because you need to fill your mind first with all these new knowledge to start iterating on that. Because if you stay in the old side, you're going to iterate on that itself. You know, see that screen, come with a different screen, see that screen. But if you try to learn more on what those things and dimensions are, you're actually, what do you say, improving your spectrum of knowledge. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I too, I have an interest in this because I have a friend who is Amal, he is in Buy Me A Coffee. He does these things and posts it on a story. Like, if uh, you order a button, click on the order card, if you have an interaction with a button, you can see that you implement it, you can feel it. That's why I came here to know so, more. There are communities on that, as I was saying, there's these, uh, just note down if you want, like sure. all these communities, go in these communities. Uh, there are files, a lot of files. Thank you. Call to wrap. Debo, with your permission, we wind up. Yep. Thank you. Okay, guys, uh, let's give a big round of applause to Ashish and Malu for the amazing talk. It was quite an animated session, highly informative, and filled with very creative ideas and examples. I thank you for making this wonderful session possible. Thank you, guys. Now, I invite Fireport 80 committee members, Ajoy and Rahul, to present the Momento as a token of appreciation. Yeah. Thank you. For concluding remarks, I invite Debu, Managing Director of FIRE. Uh, so, uh, thank you so much, Ashish, and uh, UX Shorts for such a wonderful session. Because uh, why he asked Jiku to give a feedback is because he was from the beginning, that is, whenever he is showing each slide, when the animation comes in, he was telling, like, look, that red dot below that thing, that actually shows like how much attention to detail that he has and how much effort he has put to
preparing that slide and uh, this should be one of the best slides ever we showed in the 102 edition of Fire Boat 8. <laughs> so it was really awesome and uh, and uh, thank you so much for the team UX Shots for such a wonderful session on UI. And there is one more certificate that uh, Fire Boat 8 only gave us out and there is one guest for us so he will hand over the uh, certificate to you. So his name is Mohammed Sali. He's blind from birth, but he represented India for Paralympics in the chess competition, and he won the sil he won silver medal for India. So Sali, here we have Ashish who said uh, hi. Our cold board is Chessboard can't it illa. Chessboard under the current initiation of the market, it is a salary at the chess, Kalikan on the low Kalikia. Yeah. Thank you, Sadi Sadi. I love Kunoskaro. You three, a tip now, but give the Valerius and Dosho, Larry Ganavati. All the best, Larry. Okay, now we will officially wind up the session and then normally after Fireport 80, we will go to the other side and we will stay back and we will stay back and we will stay back and we will stay back. So, this is the 102nd edition Fireport 80, which started in 2013 and we plan Every month, first Wednesday is normally it happened. The, uh, normally it happens over the years, but this time it is on second Wednesday. So we will have another Fireport 80 you can expect on the first Wednesday next month, May. And we will let you know the uh, topic, but mostly we will have a continuation of this session on UX.